Hello ITPC, Ethan Parsimonious Piper here. Today I'm going to show you a couple of pipes that I picked up along with their history. But first, in a Briarly sitting pokerish thing, I'm smoking some Lane Very Cherry. Now, why is he smoking an aromatic outdoors, you may ask? Well, because my wife is joining me in a minute and she happens to like this stuff. So let's dive into the pipes. A month or so ago, I was able to pick up a pair of pipes from a single estate. As you know, I collect Pipe by Lee and their seconds, uh, Briar Lee and Gold Coast. So let's jump right into these two lovely pipes. First off, you notice the billiard is a three star. It's a seven point brass inlaid star. So this puts it somewhere in the early to mid forties through the mid 1950s. Now, up on the bowl, you'll see a couple of dark spots. I have examined this bowl from the inside and those do not look like burnouts. The stain has just darkened. At some point I may get adventurous enough to just try sanding through those. For now, I'm leaving them some lovely bird's eye on this side of the bowl, as you can see. A little closer up, the bird's eye on this side is just gorgeous. Now, up in the upper left-hand side of this picture, you can see another dark spot. Let's move around. And again, there's no sign from the inside that that is actually burned through. Uh, so I, I may try getting adventurous and see if I can sand, sand through that. The bird's eye gives way to some cross grain right here. But as we move around on the other side, another just beautiful display of bird's eye. And following around to the bottom, we see that it alternates back to the cross grain all across the bottom. Now let's look at the little Briar Lee stroller. So this one is a nose warmer, but with a, a medium to large-ish bowl. The bowl on that is not much smaller than the billiard, but the stem is almost two inches shorter. These little Briar Lee strollers, as the name implies, are great for going on a lunt. The carving on that is kind of interesting. It is carved all the way around. We'll get in just a little closer on that so you can see. It is also carved along the top, which you might have seen on one of the previous pictures, or if you go back, the top there is not uh, misshapen or uh, or left intentionally rough, it's actually carved. Ah, there we go. We'll take a look right there. You can see the pipe makers decided to carve into the top on, on both sides. I'm sure that was a tool effect. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just a, a nice rustication, heavy rustication carving, sort of like the old custom belts, uh, that, that type of thing. Uh, that one, uh, it's going to be a fantastic little smoking pipe. They are just gorgeous. Talk about the history of these pipes just a little bit. Now, these two pipes come from the estate of a John Franklin Shrupp. Shrupp was born in Henderson, Minnesota, in 1892. Now he and his father owned a mercantile there in Minnesota. And in 1943, John moved to Haines, Alaska. Let me show you a image of where that is. Haines is along the, the coast between Anchorage and British Columbia not far from Whitehorse, Yukon Territory. That there is some rough country. John 
John was bold. Now, wait for that breeze to die down a little. Oh, maybe it'll pick my pipe back up. Those of us who enjoy estates, part of what we enjoy about them is wondering, who smoked this before me? What did they think about? What the kinds of things did they ponder when they smoked? Well, I happen to know who smoked it before me. John Franklin Shrub. Now, John died in 1960. Supposedly, according to the estate, these pipes have not been smoked since then. So these have lain dormant for 60 years. That's pretty neat. That's a connection directly back to the person. Now, Haynes, Alaska being rather rugged and remote, I wonder, did he go fishing for salmon? Did he go hunting elk, moose, bear? Did he sit and watch the northern lights? I don't know if they're visible from Whitehorse, from that area in Yukon. But I know the sky's got to be gorgeous up there. It's lovely country. I, I did some Google searches just to see images of the area. Absolutely beautiful. So I do. I wonder. What are those pipes seen up there? It's part of the fun of owning and smoking old, in particular, estate pipes. At some point in time, John moved back to Minnesota. Can't find out a whole lot more details about that, but, but he died back in his hometown in 1960. But just a little bit of history. Probably the only two pipes that I have where I know anything at all about them. The, uh, the, between the information that I was able to get from the, the sellers and what I was able to find online, there isn't a lot, but there's just enough there to get me wondering. And uh, yeah, never been to Alaska. Maybe someday I can take these pipes back up there and they'll see another light back in an old home. And with that, folks, light something you like. If not, like something, light something your wife likes. Enjoy your afternoon.